interesting. Oh, so exciting. Okay, here we are, episode 107, um, The Hub, which, by the way, I had a mild freak out just before we're about to start this because I feel like we named it, did, like we changed the order of them, I feel like. Oh, we did. We shot this out of order. We yeah. did shoot this out of order. Yeah. yeah, and also originally it was named the Sandwich Incident, but Joss Whedon came in and was like, no, you're calling it the hub. <laughs> and we were like, okay. Um, I personally really felt connected to the Sandwich Incident, uh, but I guess the hub sounds cooler. But yeah, we shot this out of order. We, when did we, sh did we shoot this in, did we swap it with eight? Yeah, so because it was the Thor tie-in, right? And something oh, yeah. about that, we couldn't, I can't remember why this all happened now, but I had the panic of my life because in my scripts, this is called 108 in my emails. And then I went on IMDb and I was like, wait a second. So actually <laughs> I should say, this is Lauren LaFranc. <laughs> oh, yeah, hi. Hi, she's amazing. Wrote this episode along with Rafe Judkins who was her writing partner at the time. Lauren now is show running Impulse, which is on YouTube Red. Do we know about a third season? No, it's not gonna happen. They, are, they stopped doing um, original programming. Ah! Oh. I know, it's really sad. We left it in a very dark place too, so whoops. <laughs> <laughs> well, do check it out if you haven't seen Impulse already. And that's very exciting, Lauren, because I feel like now you're just going to go off and do other magic. I get to go be a magician. Yes. I, I don't know if I'll be good at it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And just something, just in case you haven't met Lauren before, she's such a supporter of finding, um, you know, creating pathways into the industry and has been such a supporter of me trying to do other things and just to watch how you, oh my God, I'm just about to admit somebody else into the Zoom, but to watch how you support other people around you, Lauren is amazing. And I can see how uncomfortable you are. So I'm just gonna let Serial Thank you. in. Thank you for recognizing how uncomfortable I am. <laughs> Serial Bish is coming on. There she comes! <laughs> oh my gosh, Clopal! Oh, hey. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so uh, glad to see you're so professional still with your Serial Bish as your- um, as I have been solely, like my entire job for the past few months has um, been po like political. And I um, will be on Zooms with some of the most uh, prestigious official officialance of the official world and like, I right, still, now. like right. right now and I still have not changed my name so um <laughs> the, the problem is much. it's what we need uh, you know as a political system we need a serial bitch yeah it's called breaking bound barriers <laughs> it's called being relatable <laughs> Zach cute blazer do you like that oh also, yeah. the headphones. These are new. These are new. These are actually my cousins. You look like an '80s DJ. But I Isn't ran into a problem. You guys can keep surprising each other. <laughs> I know. After so I know. I'm very tired. Lauren, hey, look, at, look at that surprise. Oh, oh wow. wow! Yeah, I don't have oh, pants on. There. No pants. <laughs> no pants. Maybe it's maybe maybe it's no pants. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous as to where this is going to go. Um, I'm going to press play on my end. Do you, are you going to watch it, Lauren, or how you? Feel? Yeah, I have it on. I pulled it up on Netflix and I, I can hit play. Should I pull it up on my Netflix on my? No, I could just say what's happening. No. Um, yeah, don't do anything, Chloe. No. Oh, wait, I need to mute this. So this is going to go horribly wrong. Wait. I, um... I bought the whole of season one on Amazon Prime because I guess England doesn't have it on Netflix. So I've been telling everyone, oh, watch it on Netflix and you can't. Wait, I should, I should hashtag, hashtag VPN. Yeah, put it on. You're on a live so much. We're, we're moving with you, Chloe. Where are you taking Yeah, it? no, I, I gotta go. She, she's busy. We really she came prepared this week. Her living room. I know, it's so lovely, so neutral. So yeah. many interesting night spent in there <laughs> makes cocktails strong 
Yes. Okay, you guys are gonna come with me. Yes, take us. I don't want take to us on a journey. The live chat live, live, right? So Any questions? Yeah, but don't worry. I like your hair. Your your roots look good. I'm keeping it. Right, like, I don't know. You're, those aren't your roots. You got some split ends though. I have so many. But I it's the vibe I'm going for. Yeah, okay, oh the TV is turning on, which is cool, which is really cool. I mean, Colson's just getting tortured. Wow, I really just don't remember anything from this episode. No, you will. You watch it because I had, I did, and then I watched it, and I was like, oh my god! I thought this was so much later in the season. <laughs> I rewatched it recently, and I have not seen this in a very long time, and it was very weird. It was like all coming back to me. I was remembering yeah. all of it. It was I crazy. Like exactly what was happening that day. What you ate for breakfast. This is really not true. Oh, okay. Something happened. So I have a quick question while everything's getting set up. Uh, Emily's already firing one off. How did the writers decide on a prosciutto and buffalo mozzarella sandwich to be? <laughs> how did that? How? How did? I that? can't remember. <laughs> um, but I do. I mean, it was called the sandwich incident originally, so it was very important to me. I know that much. Like it felt like you needed. Fitz and Simmons to have some kind of deep specific connection to show their history and what better way to do it than with a sandwich. And it had to be a very specific sandwich. That's not like, you can't just do a turkey and cheese, sure. right? Yeah. It has to be in a certain yeah. level. They're British, yeah. um, if you didn't know. Uh, not that prosciutto is <laughs> there. Really, it would be like a brie and chutney kind of thing, right? What do you guys think of there? Huh? What's your sandwich game? Oh, uh, well, I was always banana. <laughs> banana. A banana sandwich? Yes. What? I don't know. Just banana? Like what, yeah. about, what about banana? Can you speak for your eating habits throughout our entirety of Shield? Because they, they changed a lot. They really changed. In season one, it was all about the sandwich. You became more American. And then you became yeah. British again for like one season. And then you became more American. Yeah. Than ever, I yeah. Think. yeah. You only drank tea, did not drink coffee for the first like season and a half. Can you believe that? And like oh, only I like PG that. tips and yeah. then a sandwich. Yeah. Like <laughs> I don't think I ever saw you eat meat. Like it was like a sandwich, like on wheat bread. And also a fun fact about Elizabeth that like is crazy. It's the craziest thing about Elizabeth is that she prefers the end pieces of bread. Yes. <laughs> Nuts. You do do that. You and take the weird end pieces and make a sandwich. It's crazy. And then you get more bread. I have to you go to only the eat the end like from you. What? You no, know the pieces I that no one wants. That yeah. are just burnt bread basically, and they're yeah. like hard That's and what she wants. That's what she will go out of her way to yeah. make into a sandwich. That makes sense. It's, it was like her choice in men. You know, yeah, on the end of the loaf. Yep, right to the end, slightly. Yeah, no one wants. Yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, wait. I'm looking up agents. Of I'm going to be way oh behind. Chloe, you in particular look very young. I. You well, this is before my face transplant. <laughs> <laughs> How much did that cost? That was expensive, right? It was really tricky because we did we shot for seven straight years, so it was tricky to hide all of, <laughs> all of the surgery. Yeah, yeah. Time. Oh, I think we shut down though for like 20 weeks for your face My to recover. Face. Yeah. Yeah. Like, forget it. I was, I was such a baby when I started the show and I just had a baby face. I also, here's the thing I did get is I did get fake teeth, which is what I think people think is what I, why. You have fake teeth right now? Like all of your yeah, teeth? I, I grinded them all down. Like I have really bad TMJ, so I grinded them down and I had to get in between season four and five, like people are gonna say whatever. I really don't, I mean, I very openly speak about it. Um, I, it was so painful, what, like that whole thing. Yeah. But I, yeah. I love the way you describe it, Chloe, because it sounds like you're making it up, but it is, it is true. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 my teeth were like literally moving. Like my teeth were like significantly smaller. They weren't even being useful as teeth. I would wake up and there'd be like teeth grinds in my mouth because of how bad. So I, I have to sleep with all this headgear on and stuff like well, that. Well, you had wisdom teeth taken out in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. Remember that? That's Should when they first head told head me head? that I was like, my teeth were not in good shape. They were like, your teeth are being, you're going to grind your teeth down and you're going to have no teeth by the, like, by the time you're like 50, you're, you're, 
my age. By the time I'm Zach's age, I'm gonna. Do you have- think? Do you think you were grinding your teeth at night because you were stressed out with, like, by working with Elizabeth from like? <laughs> was really, like I was like, she drinks tea, and how does she stay up all night even though she like, drinks only tea and, and she eats banana? Banana. I'll she never banana. banana and loaf sandwiches. I know. How can I compare? Okay, the hub, right? Yeah, yeah. the hub. I hate this is. I you hate it. Play at the same time. So what? what? You've got to press play at the same time. Oh, are you waiting for me? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh, okay, okay sorry. Okay, I can't play. Okay, did you play? Wait, are we all playing it now? What are okay. we doing? I'm sorry. I thought you guys were had it playing. Bad at stuff. Oh, I think I'm 30 seconds ahead. Actually, back. So. Okay, I'm at the Marvel flip. Me too. Okay. Me yeah. Back. You guys, Wait, this is the worst episode for me to watch. I forgot what this one was. Do you remember why this is so bad? Do you Cause remember? Because your, your teeth? Because your no, mouth? Not just because of that. Oh. Mm. Do, do you remember <laughs> Memorize the Wednesdays wrong? <laughs> I don't oh mean to make God. this all about me, but the hub was when we were walking in the hub, right? When we we're in the thing and I have, we have this walk and talk with like, a, like 200 extras. Yeah, at the design center, at the, right? Oh, the design yeah. center, and I stayed up all night running my dialogue, and I ran the next Wednesday's dialogue, and not that Wednesday's dialogue, and it was all my exposition, and I'm- all if I didn't get it right, it was a it was like a two hundred person reset, and I got I came to set and we had our rehearsals, and I was like. When I realized what scene it was, I was like, oh my, I started like, do you remember I started crying? Elizabeth, you came up to me. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I was like panicking and I was like, these are all, I don't know any of these lines at all. And they were all like exposition. Like I couldn't, what, I don't, I was like, I don't know. You any mean of they them. were like really well written? Is that what you mean by exposition? <laughs> like they were really essential to the scene? Is that what you mean? I just wanted to clarify. They were but. essential. They were essential. But the, here's the thing. There were lines that you couldn't like, you can't like casualize. Casualize. You had to like know them, and those are the ones you just have to run. Yeah, and you're the so, driving force behind this whole episode with you, being, you know, kind of wanting to step outside the norm. I really, I, I couldn't. I still, every single time I drive past the Pacific Design Center, I think of that day and like oh think my of how, my, how I, I think of how unprofessional you were. Like whenever I drive by, I'm like, oh God, Chloe that day. That's like my first. <laughs> it was the fucking worst. She didn't know any of her lines. <laughs> That's not true. What's your What's your line pro? Like, so how? What's your What's casual that you're like you kind of get it? Like in terms of how you memorize lines. It totally depends on like, obviously anything that is that it has happened. Like, and like that we've shot a scene already. Like, so like normal life, say I'm referencing, like I'm telling Colson, well, yeah, I had a conversation. I talked to Fitz and Simmons and when they said that the, the, the test results came back negative and it's because of the whatever, blah, blah, blah. If I had done that scene with them before and I was there listening, it's much easier because you've like been there and you did it. So it's, it's more normal. There's um, also a psychological thing of knowing that you've run the lines or you've at least looked at them. And then being in a scene where there's 200 background and every reset costs a ton of money. That's, yeah. I mean, that's just the worst nightmare when you get to set and you go, oh my God, I've learned the wrong lines. It was, I, I was hysterical. Like it was one of those moments where I had to pull, go to the trailer and I had to pull myself together. And I was like, you just have to, like, I couldn't panic. I just had to like, but I was, Clark, Clark poor Clark, he was so sweet. He pulled me aside on many times during this episode and was like, you got this, it's okay, this happens. Cause it was my first, I felt so unprofessional and I really, I was like, oh no, like this is, they're gonna think I just didn't, I was like, I stayed up all night running the wrong scenes. We're so baby. You're so little. I mean, also Elizabeth, your hair is like, you as a shield agent woke up really early and like did your hair, like curled it. Did, Our I mean, hair this whole it. season is absolutely ridiculous. I'm just gonna yeah, say. Yeah, I have so many hair extensions in. They made a halo of extra hair. Oh um, God, what if the hair, I'm so nervous. I can't even look at it. I'm yes. talking, these are the lines. 
I'm talking. Yeah. You're so professional though, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't I know, know I just called you deeply unprofessional recently, but oh, so pro. pro so, well, a lot of partners as well, because it was just all steady come following us. So you can't even like no. You know, they were like, yep. And it's just a big steady cam throughout all of these extras. And we were moving so far. Oh, it was Bobby Roth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. What? Oh. That was nice that it was with Clark too. Were you like, oh my God, it's with Colson. I've done this with Clark. Did, this you just, did you just run it with him a bunch to just like flush it out real quick? I don't know how I said these. I think we might have even, I think Lauren, I think we might have even cut some. I could like, because it was, I had like all the hub scenes for this was, were on this day. So there were more with me and Colson. Yeah, there was a, was a big day. There was like a lot of stuff to shoot this day. All of this stuff. Hey, Lauren. So I have a question for you from Tabby. It says, what did you study to end up becoming a show writer? What was your path into this? uh actually my major in college was anthropology linguistics uh so <laughs> not screenwriting um and then yeah I just uh I, I always loved writing though and I took a lot of writing classes in college and then um just kind of would read a bunch of scripts and tried to like figure out how to do that kind of format and then I started as a as an assistant at a talent agency at CAA um <laughs> Which yeah. a lot of people do. What? You, you at college with Ray? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And we did sketch comedy there. So, like, we did some of that stuff for fun, but like, nothing. Super, you know, like, we, yeah. We wrote and, and performed stuff. I know. It's crazy. Oh, is that, um, it's not, though, because you're so funny. Yes. Is that recorded anywhere? Uh, probably. I don't know. They, they did have recording devices when we were in school. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so you yeah, were at then, PAA. Yeah. Which, so that's very common is to like start it as a PA, like on set or as a writer's PA, if you're lucky enough to be in a writer's room or as an assistant somewhere. And then you just write a lot. I mean, I just, I didn't like hang out with a lot of people initially. I just was constantly writing in my free time and your hours are so bad as an assistant. Um, and then got an opportunity to be in these writers programs, this Writers on the Verge program for NBC and a CBS writers program. Um, and then from there got staffed. And so got very lucky in terms of like getting to do that at a pretty young age. Um, How and fairly old were you when you got staff for the first staff infection? Cool. <laughs> first I get a staff infection every <laughs> six months. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I was like, I was pretty young. Uh, somewhere in the 24 to 26 range. I'd have to do the math. But you so, were right in all your free time. I feel like that's such a good piece of advice that if you want to be a writer, you just have to write all your free time and then, then you're ready for that opportunity that if someone's like, hey, do you want to be in this writing program, submit a script, you don't have to go, oh, give me a month, I'm going to go polish this one. You've got it ready to go. Yes, here's my submission. Yes, you got to like work really hard in the job you're given and try to be as good as possible at that. It's kind of annoying because our industry is really bad with paying people very well when you're an assistant. So it's really hard. Um, but yeah, write as much as you can. And then when, yeah, exactly. Like what Elizabeth said, when someone gives you that opportunity, you're ready to go. And so it's like connections mixed with and mixed with people who are like mentoring you and supporting you. And, and then just you working really hard to try to get better. And then once you're on a show, you just like you start to learn a lot more and you find great mentors in your writer's room, ideally. Um, I know I did, and then kind of go up from there. That's an interesting thing because I think a lot of people think that it's like either you just have to only write or only whatever it is, like you only write or it's, it's preparation and opportunity. That's where the success comes from. Yeah. A lot of people like are either out and it's easy in LA to be so distracted by making all these connections and networks and stuff but then they're not ready and they're not prepared with what they need to show up. Yeah. I think that's like what's rare. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's tricky. <laughs> well, it's hard because when you're an assistant, you're, there's so much expected of you. And so writing's not your day job. So it's exhausting. It's like understandable that it's hard to like get something going, but it's tough because yeah, I've met people who like, they're so connected and yeah, everyone's yeah. waiting to give them some kind of opportunity. They want to help them. They want to read something and they just don't have anything yet. 
Mm -hmm. to forgive someone just partly because they've been working so hard in their day job so Mm -hmm. it's it's hard how did you come to shield what was the pathway there um i had worked on a few different shows my honest enemy was a show with christian slater and saffron burroughs who's in this episode actually um wow that's cool yeah and uh i that show got canceled as many shows do and then worked on Chuck for a, for like three years. And so that was like action comedy elements. Um, and then worked on the show Hemlock Grove, which was a Netflix show that was a horror show. Mm-hmm. And then after that, <clears throat> Rafe and I were just like developing. And then this came up as an opportunity. Our agent called us and like, we're always, I was big, big fan of Buffy. And little did I know that like Jed and Mo would become like my, my people um, and, and so we went and, and met uh, with Jed, Mo, and Jeff. And the three of them are like the most incredible, great people. You guys know this, um, but any opportunity to share that is, is great. They're just like the loveliest, funniest people. And we went in and met with them. And like, they, I think they asked us for like show idea, like pitches, which was really stressful. And it's also stressful when you're meeting with like three people who you're like, you guys are really great and I'm working on like the first Marvel show like I'm trying to get that job which was yeah I mean you guys as actors right like there's just so much pressure because you're like oh my gosh they're gonna make a Marvel TV show and no one really knew what that would be and it was really exciting I mean more stressful for you having to make it up like create that that's no that's not true you got how much pressure was put on you guys in season one I feel like a lot I mean we've heard about Chloe's breakdown during this episode (laughs) Um, a sad thing happened on my end London to LA come in um I just brought one plug adapter with me so I'm gonna have to unplug my Apple TV and plug in my laptop so you guys just tell me what's going on yeah oh uh, yeah uh, there's not a bar right now. one moment please yeah for those who don't know Lil is in London now I don't think we told anyone Oh, oh yeah, we just told ourselves. Yeah, we told ourselves. Did you quickly put up that backdrop? Or is that oh, a backdrop? Is that? <laughs> well, we talked a lot about Elizabeth's backdrop when we were offline. There's still yeah. more to talk about. There's still yeah. more. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot because we chatted a bit before, and I forgot. Brilliant. Oh my god, my brain. This is a tablecloth because I don't have a sparkly background here yet. So um, this is a tablecloth that I had here before. Oh, got it. Got it, of course. Well, I'm just playing on, on you guys now. I'm just focusing totally on you. This is how <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a, a, well, this was your sky still. So this is a skim and seam. Is, are you guys on the skim and seam? Am I ahead? Our hair and makeup. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just going to say this. this it look, we look crazy. Like this is something that's crazy. I, I can't like believe this is on hair. Yeah, um, of the same hey like maybe less Let's tone it down yeah. yeah but not even like it's like so like it's just a lot <laughs> you're very done up for being spies like you I take have, a like, lot of time in the morning i just yeah, don't know how to how did that even happen there was one episode where i forget who made the comment and it was like how everything was branded shield for like a spy agency <laughs> it was like every yeah was shield pen was shield yes like, oh, I, love I wish it. i took more of that stuff i uh, know i know like the bottles were well basically we just need but we could also print labels you know feel like but they stopped that after season one a lot you know yeah, yeah. I wish I took one of the i also miss the like the level of luxury we were living because the reality is is like yes we're all we're still the acting doing these like scenes but the, but we are it is nice to act in a nice area you know what i mean so we're like acting on this like amazing gorgeous plane oh, and yeah. then by like season five we're like in dirty dirty hallways and my mom like caught up on season she's like it's just so she's like i just feel bad for the characters because you guys are just in those dark hallways all day <laughs> Mom, no, we were in there yeah. just as long as they were, like longer than that, actually. Like that was us just in those dark, dark hallways for like a year. <laughs> it's crazy. See, I left after season three because I only like luxurious environments. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were like, oh, the plane, the, they're blowing up the plane. Got it. No. So yeah, we- I was like, oh, I'm not. Actually, we blew up the plane 
season in one. this season yeah season episode two didn't we and then we got yes it. yes we did well, then we just yes. did it. it was very early <laughs> well the reason i got you on play Val, um or like you know it's like hey hey super busy day do you yes. want to come on um it's because this feels like it's the birth of skimmers I know. We're all going on a mission together for the first time. It really, really is. That was really fun. I'm, I'm, there's a scene happening right now, which is one that I, they're using a lot. Oh, I can't even look at myself. Um, I, I know this was the first, it's me, me and Clark saying something. I can't hear it. Let me just play it. He just walked away and my makeup is really bad. <laughs> oh, oh, you just came up. I'm like a robot version of himself right now. Colson's acting like a robot version of himself right now. Was that like deep, deep yeah. foreshadowing? I oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, Elizabeth is us. <laughs> oh look, is this the bad girl shenanigans thing? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's on a lot of mugs and t-shirts. It is. What do you call your bad girl shenanigans? I need to get That's one of those. Fun. Yes, babe, I remember because wasn't it this scene too? Huh? Sorry. You, that was a surprise. The There's light. like a parade happening right outside of my house. If you're hearing, can you hear all that? No, uh, a parade? How fun! Like, I'm not sure if it's a good one. You know, I think there's like a lot happening. I'm not sure though. But okay, can't hear anything. I can't hear it. Chloe, is there, is there, this is, I'm getting a bunch of people asking this. Is there a scene that sticks out to you? I guess this episode, but I think they're probably also talking the entire series. One scene where you're like, that was the money scene that stands out. I loved it. Oh my God. I have so many answers for you if you don't have them. Maybe Lil should answer it for Chloe and Chloe should answer it for Lil or something. Ooh, I like that. Well, I it's didn't like anything like I don't like watching is very difficult for me. I'm having a hard time just like watching it. I don't love, I can, I can speak on experiences, but like final product, no. Oh, <laughs> I have a lot for Elizabeth. Well then let me twist it. Yeah, what, Chloe, do you have one where you're just like, wow, Lil killed it. And Lil, do you have one that's like, Chloe just killed that? Can I go first? Cause I have so many. <sighs> sure. In this, in this episode, with you, me, and Sitwell when you're on the other side of that door. That was, I think, one of the funniest days of my life. Number one, because you were so- I don't remember. <laughs> I was so fucked up <laughs> during those weeks. <laughs> they were like, you guys, you'll be fine to get your wisdom because I had already pushed my wisdom teeth and I was in a lot of pain, so I needed to get them out. And so I pushed them and this was like- oh, Another a time, we have no- like, no. And at this point, we were all working five days a week. All every day. So I had already pushed it and I finally like locked it in. And they're like, okay, so I can get it done on a Friday and I'm back to work on a Monday. So I, ha I have like two days to like recover from like having my face completely just like ripped up. And I was only supposed to get two taken out and they took out four. So <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, we had to take out all four. And yeah, so that scene where we haven't, it hasn't aired yet, where we haven't, is I was on, who knows what, I, what kind of cocktail of like. That's because we well, clearly don't remember, but we had to, like Lauren, you might remember. You were like in that little corner by the door, right? Like hiding back. <laughs> We had to guide you, like one person on each arm, guide you into that corner. And I feel like they wanted you like away from the door a little bit. And then in the end, people were just like, okay, just just lean against it, like just in that corner. And you <laughs> I do think some of the blocking was done because of your inability to do more than stand <laughs> in one place. We're like, all right, we'll just, you know, uh she's fine like this doesn't look like she's leaning too much that was a very fun day for me I remember all of us just laughing I don't it was definitely at my expense I remember like the them having door there every time what people don't appreciate and real really realize is any time on shield that you see a door automatically opening that is a hundred percent two people having to coordinate when to automatically open you would think that this would be you would just think this would be something that's easier because we're doing <laughs> crazy things. The, those, the door <laughs> automatically opening things are probably, probably cost production like millions of dollars total of how much time it takes to coordinate 
us walking through a door that effortlessly opens, which is, or if it's purposely closing, that was a whole thing. I remember, oh, this is, okay. That's the beginning of it. Our, this is our timid Simmons really breaking out the big guns. Yes. I mean, I'm jumping ahead, but. This is also like, I love this scene so much. It made me laugh so much on set and everyone was laughing. And it's also like, we got to show you guys doing something funny and comedic and like kind of started to play with the tone uh, of the show. This really planted the seed for Planet Kitson. You know? oh my yeah. God. And I do feel like we deserved more of these. You know what I mean? I think, is, it, is there only maybe two? Of just us two going on a mission? Well, we did have all of season four, didn't we? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not true at all. Yeah, we did a lot. Well, six. I was serious. I was so moody. And it was like the, you know, emo Scott or e emo Daisy. Yeah. Oh, sick. No, then we did uh, Destroy of Worlds, Space. Yeah. yeah. We did get to touch base as Skimmins every season, at least. This was the first. What was, what was your name once you were Daisy? Dimmins? It was always Skimmins. We never yeah, changed Skimmins. It. You have yeah. to keep Skimmins because the yeah. D, that Daisy thing really through us it did and I remember being like there's no way how are they going to just change my character's name like everything is sky everything and then it just happened very yeah, like, yeah. did yeah. you we which people, like relate to more like which do you do do they feel like separate people to you sky and daisy definitely I mean they they no and then yeah and each each season there it was she was so like yeah. different that it just felt they all felt different. Uh, we had in the writer's room, uh, when we changed your name from Sky to Daisy, like a swear jar equivalent, where mm -hmm. any anytime we said Sky instead of Daisy, we had to put, I think we had to put like a dollar in, which I still, to this day, I'm like, that's absurd. That's an absurd amount of money yeah. for how much we talk about characters' names. It had Sky on it and then Daisy's on it. It was like a tissue box. I remember seeing this. You guys took it very seriously. And I was like, who made this and took the time to do that? <laughs> Well, Monica, her first, her, she had the first episode, I think that season where you were, you were Daisy or she, we were breaking her episode right when we decided to do the swear jar thing and she had to pitch it all the time. So she constantly was accidentally saying sky and she threw down a lot of money. She was so yes, upset. Monica's money. It was, really yeah, it was, it was very funny for us. Yeah. Not for her. Yeah. This episode, Lauren, like how did you, was did you guys say, we we want it. What? <laughs> did you? Guys, how did you choose to write this one, you and me? Oh, we don't choose them. That's oh, Jeff, mm -hmm. Jeff, Jed, and Mo tell us which ones we're gonna write. But like, they usually it's just kind of this is episode seven, and so we're gonna have you guys do it. Not always because we know what the story is gonna be. I mean, season one we, this is when we started splitting rooms up too. So we broke six and seven with Paul Rafe and me did both those episodes. And then like there was another group who did five and eight. I don't know how that happened, how we ended up splitting them that way. Um, but that was like Monica, Brent and Shalisha were over there and then Jed, Mo and Jeff would kind of go in between rooms. So we ended up doing that quite a bit. We always had two rooms running on S.H.I.E.L.D. at least when I was there because we just, we had so many episodes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, to break yeah Paul was on last week and he gave you a big shout out saying that you I mean so so um great to break story with I love Paul Z he knows I, I love, love him, love him. To go to room too. I remember this and I always used to peek in your guys's room do you remember I like do you remember when we like, raided your and Rafe's office yes I do yeah. and you left us a lot of weird yeah. post-it notes yeah okay. so we did what right having a writing partner right? for people that don't know that you know like a writer's room is is filled with different writers right and usually each person writes an episode but then can you explain how it is to be in in a pair so it kind of depends on the pair like everyone does it differently and I always ask other writers writing teams like how they did it at this point we had been writing together for so long we just would split scripts and swap and kind of like go through and maybe edit stuff of the other persons but we were very independent but I, I know some teams sit side by side and write I mean Jed and Mo are a team I don't know how um how they would do it I think they kind of would like split scenes and stuff too and like split responsibilities for them when you're show running I mean 
it's so helpful to have other people helping you because it's such a crazy job. Um, but yeah, so it kind of just depends on like the team and the way that they do stuff and their vibe. I mean, it was really fun seeing, like working for Marissa and Jed who were a married couple, they still are. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they're like so in love with each other, which, cause you know, it's scary. You're like, oh my gosh, we're gonna work for yeah. a married couple. Like that could be bad, I don't know. Yeah. They just were like, they're just so, they're also the best people ever, but like deeply in love with each other. And it's very fun to go to work every so day rude. with two people who are like real into each other. They're so oh. Lauren, do you like being on set or do you like being in the writer's room? If, if Elizabeth and Chloe are there, I don't like being on set. <laughs> They're just really difficult people. Um, no, I really like being on set. I, I like both. They're different kinds of experiences, different, you use your brain differently. Yeah, I loved having you on set. I really missed oh, you. So good. It just I feels miss you guys. Yeah. One of our last episodes that I I remember because it was a very difficult one was season three when Hive was in my body. And do you remember when we were shooting outside? And what happened? Like, and we were. It was super bright, and there was like oh. we shot next to a gun range location <laughs> yes and, and a preschool were yes, in, was in, in, and under an airport do you remember this <laughs> it, was it was crazy like a, the worst combination of sounds like it was hands in the middle of an emotional scene it was an, an, an emotional scene that was difficult for both of us to wrap our head around because i was like we the idea of hive like being in me wasn't as flushed out, I think, as both of us would have liked it to be, if that makes sense. Because we were both like, the logistics of this are what? And we were both trying to figure it out. But every four, it was like by far the most, the craziest sound situation that we've ever, for most, for people who don't know, like, you know, we're mic'd and we like, every time you see us on camera, we have a hidden mic somewhere. And then every, t also there's a boom. So like they, they do a lot to make sure that the quality of sound is really important. But like, if, the, if you're outside shooting, you're gonna always have to like re-record, like ADR, which is you don't wanna have to ADR because especially in an emotional scene, it's hard to kind of put yourself back in that place and get your voice to match. And you can kind of like tell. So like, I do as much as I can. I hate doing ADR. I hate, I hate when it takes you out of it, blah, blah, blah. But this was like, Keith, I think was like about to kill somebody. <laughs> that I wonder what happened in it I bet you someone could tell us the number it was uh God, it, was, I should know. Uh, it was when I was with Hive I met Hive at a meeting place outside I was wearing a red sweater um yeah what a else? jacket it was the end of it was it was when like I went rogue because Hive was like manipulating my brain and I tried to kill Mac was that the May centric episode? I should know this, you guys. It's been a while. You wrote it because you were there. I know, but it's been a long time. 17 or 317. Anyway, that's. What was the name of that one? Or oh, are people saying? So sad. That. Uh, that 317. I'm not... The Singularity 317. Yes. 317. Oh, yes. Wait, this is when. I think I started Fitz crying Fitz during that scene. Fitz and Simmons did the dirty in this episode. And, uh, wiped it from my memory. Sorry, Fitz and Simmons. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that was the first time they 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 yeah. made love. Oh, I'm I'm muting. They oh. made that sandwich. <laughs> they that was the sandwich incident. We yeah. should have called that one the sandwich incident. Yeah, that's gross. Um, I'm gonna yeah. right now on screen. <laughs> Uh, that location was the worst location ever. When they scouted it, they evidently, no one was shooting guns because it was near a police range and no one, their school wasn't in. And- It was crazy that the overlap was so drastic. It was so loud. Um, that was crazy. That, I think that was like, that was my last memory of you like really working with you on set. But I feel like that wasn't your last episode. Uh... It could have been. I think it maybe was. Wow. Yeah, I think oh. it was. 
I I'm remember glad being frustrated. On set was like the, your most terrible day. But like I was, I remember being like, and it's Lauren's episode. Like I hate that I'm like so annoyed. Like that it was distracting me from just getting to like hang out with you on set because I really looked forward to you being on set. Yeah. We did do oh. face swapping though. I remember we did some, yeah. that was like when face swaps were big in photos. We did like a lot. Oh my god, I remember all of those. So many face swaps. Why yeah. did you do ABR for the scene in this when you had your because I feel like you still had the uh, gauze in your teeth, right? For the the sit well shooting and the Simmons scene. Did you ADR that? Must I, have I think I had to ADR like all of this. This is one of the, right now, I think I pod, this is me and Colton yelling at each other about what, and this is again, the same day of all the dialogue where I didn't know any of it. Um, this was the last scene of the day. So I was ready to be like on, just get things, getting the fuck out. I don't remember if this was, Pre or post? Because my face. Oh, this was pre. Yeah. I feel like it's one of the last things was the was the sit well thing because all of a sudden you were just like <laughs> this different person. You guys feel like this is when you two really bonded. When did you guys start really like realizing you were in love with each other oh. and you were each other's people? I think it took a. I, I, I don't know, Elizabeth. What, what's your answer? Well, I always felt comfortable with you because we'd met before. So I felt like you were kind yeah. of my, my like known rock, you know, but right. I was also just so scared for the first, up until episode six, once episode six happened, I was less, I felt m so much more comfortable. So I feel like this episode with you, Chloe, I feel like we just, I felt like this was the first episode I really had fun. I still I, felt like I was so scared this whole, like the whole season, you're just moving so fast. And I was, there's so, there's so much pressure. Every level of the show was getting so much pressure. You too, because you were like, you know, the lead with Clark and Ian and I were more kind of blah, 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 in the background. So I feel like Probably when I got like meaty scenes, it felt like, okay, brilliant. I've got so much time to prepare. Whereas you would have, you know, a night to look at them because you had a bazillion scenes that the day before. Like, I do feel like there was more pressure on you. I feel like I had like a year long anxiety attack during the entire first <laughs> season and then maybe also second season. So I don't even know, like I lost, like I didn't talk to anyone outside of the show. Like you just can't, you lick you. I would fall asleep with lines on my face because I was like running them still on that like and then I'd wake up and it would be like get to the zephyr it was like on my face like <laughs> it was like so just like trying to keep up what, so would you say, oh, what would you say like for somebody that's going through a super stressful time whether that's trying to act or when you get the job or just like in daily when you just feel like the workload is massive what helped you through yeah. that season oh I don't even know. You think it, it was really is, You think I, I helped you? I you think, think I helped you? But by the way, you joke, but I really looked forward to you on set and I really yeah. felt very like, uh, it definitely is my instinct, I think coming from my upbringing was not to like go, like to like fall into female friends. And it was interesting how much that's what you needed. Cause a lot of it is being a young woman in a workplace. There's a lot of extra pressure on young women particularly. And so I think uh, it, was, it was just like one step at a time cause there was so many things. And then also acknowledging that the pressure from immediately above is getting pressure from people above and like everyone just trying their best. And I, you know, just trying to not take everything too you know, it was just a different time. The industry was a different time. Everything was pretty different back then. So, it, yeah. and yeah, so. Talking about bonding moments though, I do feel there was a great bonding moment when everyone got back from Comic-Con and you were leaving the parking lot, Chloe, and the arm just kept hitting the roof of your car on, <laughs> the, on the gates leaving. I think that was. I have two iconic, like, like Zach and Lil moments. Like I have two in my mind that really stick out. Um, one's exactly an hour, 45 minutes. And one is <laughs> where like Zach and Lil saw me. Lil was, you guys were just so great for me. Just 
anyway, in general, when we came back from Comic-Con the first time, <laughs> so we were all the first time, like the last time we all took this crazy bus. Everyone's talking, we've talked about this and we come back and we have to like, we come back after like the longest weekend. We're like all hungover. And I have this like really old, like shitty Prius. That's like scratched and like door, like one light doesn't work in the front and one in the back doesn't work. Like I like got pulled over all the time. Everything was like, and um, so we had to pick up our cars on the lot and then basically drive back home and then be back at work at like five in the morning the next day. And I was pulling out, me and we backed out at the same time and you guys were like, oh, go ahead. So you guys let me go. And to get off the lot, there's the like thing. And I don't know what happened. Well, cause I, I think Ming was in front of you and you saw the barrier go up and you're like, I'm just gonna go for it. Can't be bothered to swipe my card or, you know, cause you always- I thought that. they were holding it open for everyone. Cause usually oh. the, the member, the person was always there and they like to hold it open. So I thought there's no way, cause there's like a line of cars that they're gonna just make us all do this. They all just saw us come in. Get our own cars on the lot. Yeah. yeah. And we were the only show like shooting on the lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's also Sunday and we're leaving. Like, so I thought that they were just gonna, so instead of, so I was like, doo, 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 and I see it open. I was like, oh, okay, great. And I just keep going. And then it just goes like, onto <laughs> my car. Oh my God, <laughs> such a good moment. And I was like, oh. and it just like hit the shit out of my car, but Elizabeth and Zach are behind me. And so I kind of got out and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I looked behind them and they're just crying with laughter. And it was so, so it funny. So funny. But my prized so possession funny. later that night at like one in the morning, I got a text from Zach and Elizabeth. And it was. <laughs> oh my God, I forgot. <laughs> It was Elizabeth crawling on the ground and she is my car. And then Zach, by the way, I don't know how you guys had a pool noodle, but Zach had a pool noodle and was going, and she was like, Elizabeth's like, oh, I'm just gonna leave the lot now. And then Zach just goes like this and just hits her on the back with a thing. And they reenacted the whole thing with- We've really bad with it. For years, please. <clears throat> for years, for years, for years. That was one of my favorite. That was one of my favorite moments of the whole show. <laughs> you guys are such supportive friends. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, this was what, how it was. Is the episode still going? Yeah. I think, it's and, I think it's at Ian the end. And are like... Ian and Brett, like, uh, Ward and Fitz had a little bromance in this. And then oh, yeah. Jim and had a bromance. Although, Ward and Fitz never had their, uh, like, a ship name. Uh, not as good as chemistry as we did. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Bard. Um, <laughs> we could start one. I mean, you know, he then he turns. Ward's like not a great guy, but this didn't help inform future stuff when Ward turned and like Fitz felt so betrayed by him. Yeah, it was like this was their little bro moment. Yeah, you. you this is actually a pretty interesting. Like, it looks cool. Like, there's a lot of. Oh, this is a good fight. I think I'm a little behind. Brett is so good at fighting. I think, is this the one, is this the location in like, there's one location that we've used a lot. With where you have to wear the helmets. Oh, yes. It's in San Pedro. I think this was in yes. San Pedro. There's a couple yeah. places where we, I'm like, how have people not noticed this is the same place <laughs> as Russia? Like, where <laughs> It's, you know. it's so big. It's like a really big location. It's huge. And it's really it's huge. And there's yeah. a lot of like weird, creepy places. And it sounds like when you guys started working in dark hallways, this was like a go to locale. Well, yeah. for some reason, then for our, our hallways, we were like, let's just use four of the same hallways on stage 16. And yeah. it'll yeah. just be us walking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing with shooting in hallways on set is you can just go till two o'clock in the morning if you want to. Whereas at least if you're driving to San Pedro, you've got to be out by seven because yeah. the light goes. So you just spend extra time. Wow, the Zephyr just does look like a plane is landing. It's oh, really impressive. I know. Uh, well done, yeah. cool Laura. Laura, when Flo Bell was talking about the pressure of season one and there was so much pressure on it, like we felt it as actors, but when how do you how do you be creative under those circumstances when you're getting a ton of notes from like your bosses and then their bosses and that like it was so many executives I feel like 
were around and you know potentially rightly so because it was such a huge ip but like how do you in a room still try and be like fun and creative and under it's that? you have to be so flexible um i mean it's like improv you know in that way like the and that's what a lot of people say about writers rooms the yes and quality rather than saying no and like stopping things right when you're getting going like you have to have that mentality it helps mm -hmm. greatly when you're surrounded by lovely people which our staff was always amazing like all all of the seasons of shield staff like just a great group of really funny lovely kind people but we had a lot of late nights and we were worked every weekend on season one because it was like one week we get you know from someone up high being like we don't want any comedy. We would like this next episode to be very dramatic. And we're like, uh, okay. And then we would do something like that. And then they'd be like, that was not funny at all. And we need this to be like, just way funnier, like brighter, whatever. And we're like, okay, great, great, great. And was it was it a lot of like- Telling you know each time or was it- I think they did a lot of testing. I don't know. I can't, it was, I don't know. You know, it was like, there is a, there's a problem when you've got too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, and it was definitely kind of that feeling. And then, you know, there was also this kind of like, we want to be a Marvel show. We want to be serialized. That's what we all love about Marvel. Mm -hmm. And initially, I think there's this mentality and it's kind of old school. It doesn't exist as much anymore, which is great. But it's this idea of like those first few episodes, people need to be able to pick up and watch them wherever. Like they don't need to know any of the characters. They just come in and they just see a mission of the week. They're in and they're out and then they're going to stick with it. But the thing that we always said and stood by is that you have to fall in love with these characters. You have to care about them. You don't always have to like them, but you just have to like want to see what they're up to. And so yeah. at least we started to serialize all the character stuff. And that's what's so exciting as we got deeper into season one and then moving forward is just creating interesting character moments. Like it was fun to see Simmons and Skye together. You guys hadn't been paired together yet. It was fun to put Ward and Fitz together. And then you start to understand more about who these characters are in when they're in different situations with these other characters that they're not commonly with. And so that's the stuff that was super fun. And then, you know, also the best thing about TV is that especially S.H.I.E.L.D. is like one of the few shows now that's gonna have run for so long. Like you just love these people. Like they're in your home every week. And but and it it's so meaningful when you see where you all start and then to know where you end up. Like that's kind of the most joyous thing. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. We just kind of, we made each other laugh a lot despite our long hours and despite kind of the crazy notes we'd get. And we also all just really believed in the show we were making. We're like, let's, we're making something really special. You know, just like give us a little bit of room and it'll be great. Yeah, that's so nice that it's a, such a team, like if you think of it in a team way, because I think that's what makes the best cast as well. And I think that's a lot of the reason we were on air so long is that the right, like all you guys creating the show was really nice. And it's not to say you never have disagreements, but it's all friendly in a good, positive way. And as a cast, we got on really well. And so it just helps to, you know, like we were just texting the other day about how how many funny moments we had on set mm. and it's like you don't you know that that makes it it's so weird the other day I was like I just had to get out of my house it's you know just just I just was like I'm gonna go for a drive and just put on like a music and I'm gonna go for a drive and I just I blinked and I was at Culver it was so weird I just like drove there I was like not paying attention at all I took my old school route I drove there and I was like I'm just like on the what? Just saying like, that's where we shop. That's Sorry, where yeah, that's Culver's where the Culver Studios. And I was like, oh my God. And I got emotional. I was like, this is so weird that this was like, I hadn't done that since we had wrapped and it was like sunset. And it was, by the way, like all still there. Don't know who was telling us that we had to be at whatever. But um, it was very, very, very weird that my instinct was to just drive there. And I clearly like, it's been yeah. such crazy year and so much is happening and yeah. I was like I you know those long long hours that's still going to be such a part of like yeah. just, I'm like I was sitting there like people were walking by and I wanted to be like you have no idea what this location means to me <laughs> have a good night sir that dog's nice like I just wanted to be like you guys this is crazy the memories that is happening right now I wish you would notice that this is like such a big deal for me right now that I'm sitting here <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's such a family. I mean, like, it was just, I. it's hard when you try to explain it to other people, but it's such a warm set. It's such a, like, warm writer's room, like, and it was so unique now, too, to have the writers and the actors, like, we were all together. Like, yeah. you could just walk in each other's offices. It's just so rare yeah. right now, um, these days, to, to have that. I think we might have been one of the last shows to really have that kind of connection but it's yeah. like I mean even after I left the show I'd come back and go to like go to all writers parties I'd go went to like rap parties I just like yeah. love everybody on yeah. shield well it's thank god we're doing live watch longs every week you can relive the nostalgia on YouTube on Sundays I'm gonna let um I maybe we just have time for one question from the chat um look. because I feel like uh, I have a lot to speak to you guys yeah. about. Oh, oh, what? Go oh, off, off. Line. I'm in the Zoom. <gasps> Hello. Can we? Hi. 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 I'm good. Hi, everyone. Um, I wasn't expecting to get in, so I don't really have a question. Well, hey, girl, welcome to the party. <laughs> hey. I just want to say, Chloe, I'm so um, a fan of what you're doing right now. I just, as an Asian American, it makes me feel oh. really proud and I'm so happy and I'm supporting you all the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. That means a lot. And I'm so glad that we're creating a space that you feel seen by. That's, that's exactly why we're doing it. Thank you. That means so much. Yeah. And just like S.H.I.E.L.D. has always been a favorite of mine and seeing you and Ming and Elena um just like strong powerful women it's just really 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 awesome and just to see you in like your real lives also being those amazing women especially Elizabeth and like conquering your anxieties I just feel really like great and I feel good that I have role models like you guys that like in, even in your real life you're doing such great work oh. oh gosh I can't think of a better way to end this live thank you for saying that and um I was so excited about this week to have Chloe and Lauren on because, you know, what you're saying, Krishna, comes from people like Lauren in the writer's room as actor. Like now Chloe is doing, you know, is on the front line and creating these messages that are so important for the community. But as actors, we really rely on people like Lauren creating shows, writing scripts, it being thoughtful and real and you know just authentic and I think um a lot of what you're saying of why you maybe were inspired by our characters as well as close and uh, organization is because of people like Lauren so Lauren you're flipping amazing we love you so much I feel like this has been such you guys a you're lot. like you too I mean honestly everybody but I love you guys very much and uh yeah it's always also just to say a privilege to write for two amazing actors like yourselves it's such a privilege Ugh. And thank you, Zach, for supporting women everywhere. <laughs> Zach, thank you. Thank you, Zach, for that amazing Please jacket sir. and like the shoulder pads, like. The well, those, there's no pads. This is all. Oh, wow. Wow. All shoulder, all shoulder muscle. Flex. Are there any burning questions from the chat, or shall we, shall I let everyone into the Zoom to wave goodbye? Oh, any more? From that's my job. That's my job. <laughs> uh, there's really nothing. I think that's we. Too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just so mesmerized by all the love going on here that I just, you know. I feel just, like listen, uh, representation matters behind the screen, uh, screen, taking it everywhere. That's what we're here for. And this is like yeah. such a true, this is so, this is what we're doing. This is what, what changes the world. So, yeah. And like, people like Zach that support yes. like other strong women. We need all of it. Everyone yeah. be like Zach. Yes. And we need, and we need Elizabeth's background. <laughs> I think we should do a giveaway on that background, babe. Yeah, yes. yes. Krishna, I'm so happy I picked you. I'm so happy you came on. What an amazing mm -hmm. way to end it. Thank you, Clovel. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Zach. I'm you guys. Gonna, I'm going to let the 100 people in now in the waiting room because that's my max. And then we just wave and it'll be chaotic. And then. Yeah, Yay. Ready? I'm going to let them in Yay. now. That's it all. Oh. 
Yay, here they come. Oh, I got and oh, oh, again. Oh my god. Oh, oh, I'm in there right now. Hi Chloe. Oh my god. Hi Chloe. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi. 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 Oh, 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 oh,